When you open the box, you'll get one Blue Star desktop media phone, a handset and cord, an Ethernet cable, a power cord and AC adapter, a back cover to help protect the cables and connectors on the back of the Blue Star, and a quick start guide. The first step is to connect the handset cord to the Blue Star. The connector is on the bottom of the phone, right below where the handset will sit. Then gently route the handset cord inside the side groove. Next, connect the handset. Now let's turn the Blue Star around. The Blue Star is equipped with a two port gigabit Ethernet switch. One port is for your main network Ethernet connection. The second port can provide a connection to your PC or another Ethernet device. Put the AC adapter and power cord together, then plug it into the Blue Star. Attach the back cover by aligning the four hooks with the back of the Blue Star. And gently press down. Now let's turn our Blue Star around and get started. Your Blue Star Media Phone is equipped with four steerable array microphones that track your voice location and help eliminate unwanted background noise. The Blue Star comes with three HD speakers, left, right, and center based, that support a 20 kHz frequency range. These audio features enable you to hear and be heard. The speakers are so good and the sound is so clear, you won't need to use the handset. But in the event that you need privacy for your call, the handset also supports HD voice. The HD camera delivers up to a 6 megapixel display of bandwidth. You can adjust the camera up and down, but it does not turn left or right. This is not a problem for the high definition camera because it has a 70 degree field of view. The Blue Star Media Phone uses a large 13 inch color touchscreen and displays true 720p HD video for video calling and video conferencing. Now let's log into the Blue Star. I'll begin by entering my username and password. We'll come back and set up the biometric fingerprint reader a little later in the lesson. Once I've entered my username and password, I'll press the login button. Now that we're logged in, the first thing that we'll see is my home page. You can return to the home page anytime by pressing the home button or the home key. The favorites menu automatically appears on the left side of the home page. Here's what it will look like once I add some favorites. The favorites menu stores all of your favorite contacts and saved conferences. Their status is displayed as well as being color coded. It acts like a speed dial list so that you can quickly select a contact or a multi-way conference. Not only can you do HD video conferencing, but at the same time you can run applications. The right side of your home page houses three frames, which can display different apps. Users can easily add, move, or replace apps by using the Apps menu. To open the Apps menu, touch the Apps menu button or the Apps menu key. Touch the app you want to add to your home page. Then touch where you want the app to be placed. Valid locations are highlighted with a green border. For example, the clock app is only designed for the top frame, so you won't be able to place it in one of the smaller frames. Applications run in real time. Here's an example, Solidus eCare, which monitors the call center status of our unified communications platform. Astra has standard applications available, such as weather and stock monitoring. In the bottom left corner of the home page is the audio video button. Press this button to open the audio video control panel. Here, you can adjust the ringer volume, and when a call is active, you can adjust the volume of the other party. Activate speakerphone. Activate headset. Open the magic mirror, which displays a full size view of the video image that your Blue Star camera is sending to others. You can turn the self view on or off. This is similar to the magic mirror only it is displayed in a small window. If the self view is turned on during a call, your video image would be displayed in a small window in the bottom right corner. For this tutorial, I will turn the self view off. 
you can mute the microphone, and you can turn the camera off so that only voice is available during the call. At the bottom of the screen are the app telephone feature controls. I'll demonstrate some of these a little later in this tutorial. Before we move on, I would like to quickly mention the phone keys. The goodbye key is used to end an active call. The redial key redials a previously dialed number. The mute key, volume control key, the home key, which opens the home page, the apps menu key, which opens the apps menu, the biometric fingerprint reader, two line keys, a headset key, a hands-free key, and a standard dial pad. Now let's take a quick look at the directory, contacts, and favorites list. Touch the More button on the Apps and Telephone control panel. I can call someone who has been added to my favorites or contacts list, or I can look them up in the directory. So let me demonstrate how to add someone to the contacts and favorites list. I'll open the directory window to search for people I would like to add to my contacts or favorites. I'll sort the directory by last name. Now, I'll use my finger to scroll through the directory list. Or, I can touch the alphabetical search bar and scroll to the first letter of their last name. The first name I'll look for is Don Warner. I'll scroll to the W's. There he is. I can touch the contact box to call him, or I can touch the arrow to the right of his name. Here, I can add him to my contacts or favorites. This is like building a shortcut to find and call him in the future. Remember, the favorites are displayed on the home page, while the contact list is accessed through the app and telephone control panel. So you'll probably want to add people that you call most often to your favorites list. I'll add Don to my favorites. I also have the option to type a name in the search box. For this example, I'm going to search for Robert Ramsey. In the search box, I'll type the name Robert. When I type the first letter R, my search begins to narrow and a number will display how many times my search name or keyword is found in each list. Directory, Contacts, Favorites, and History. As I type the next letter O, the search continues to narrow. I'll continue typing until I see there are two people in the directory with the name Robert. I'll touch the arrow to the right of Robert Ramsey and I'll add him to my favorites. I'll continue to add a few more people to my favorites. Jim, Simon, and Tracy. When I'm finished, I'll press the Done button in the upper right corner. This will take me back to the home page where my favorites are displayed. I can arrange the entries in my favorites by using the drag and drop method. Another convenience of the favorites list is that once I've established a multi-way conference call, I can save the conference call as a favorite. I'll demonstrate this feature in the multi-way conference section. Now that we have our favorites set up, let's make a call. The first thing I'll do is to establish a peer-to-peer -peer or single media call with another user. From my home screen, under Favorites, I'll select Robert Ramsey. On Robert's blue star, he is alerted to the incoming call with a pop-up window. He can press Silence, which mutes the ringer, press Ignore, which will automatically disconnect the call, press Answer, which answers the call with audio only, Press Video Answer, which answers the call with HD video and audio. He could also answer the call by pressing the flashing line key, the hands-free key, or pick up the handset. After he answers, we each have two buttons in the bottom right corner of our screen, Hold and Goodbye. If I put the call on Hold, I can press the pick up button to remove the call from hold. And the goodbye button is used to hang up and disconnect the call. At the top of the screen are two LEDs located to the left and right of the camera. 
When the LEDs are lit green, this indicates that I'm using the hands-free speaker mode. If I pick up the handset, the LEDs go out. To go back to hands-free speaker mode, I will press the hands-free key and return the handset to the cradle. Notice the LEDs are green again. I can mute the call by pressing the mute button and the LEDs will turn red to indicate the call is muted. The mute button also has a red border around it. Pressing the mute button a second time will unmute the call. Now I'll share a document with Robert. I have already installed and launched the Blue Star sharing application and it's in my toolbar. I'll right click on the icon to see my choices. I can automatically share my desktop which continuously live shares my desktop so I can share a multi-page document or presentation. I can share a single screen which takes a snapshot of my desktop and shares just that one image. Or I can share a partial screen which lets me select an area on my desktop, take a snapshot and share just that one image of the area I selected. For this demo I'll select automatic sharing. I have now enabled desktop sharing to all conference participants simultaneously with video conferencing. Now I'll set up a multi-way video conference. I'll use my favorites to set up the conference, but I could also use the contacts list or the directory. The first person I'll call is Robert Ramsey. Once Robert answers, I'll press the Add Participant button. Then I'll call the next person I want to add, in this case, Tracy. As soon as Tracy answers, if necessary, I'll let her know that I'm setting up a conference call. Then I'll press the Join button, or I can press the Calls on Hold button, and then press Join. To add more participants, I will repeat the process. Blue Star also supports Picture ID. Picture ID is a feature that is set up by your administrator. On a multi-way conference, up to 11 participants can appear on screen at any one time, with the remaining users participating via a full duplex audio conference. I can easily swap participant windows by selecting the video window I want to swap then select the video window it will swap with. Each window has an Options button. Touching the Options button opens the Call Options menu for that participant. Here, I can adjust the volume or mute this participant. Add to my contacts list. Open a tone pad. At any time, I can press the Done button to close the window. Or, I can disconnect this participant from the conference. We don't need Don on the conference anymore, so we'll thank him and disconnect him from the conference. The next thing we'll look at is the conference menu. Press the More button, then press the conference menu. I can save a list of participants that are on the conference while the conference is underway. Save conferences can be dialed from the Saved Conference panel. You can also add the saved conferences to your favorites. This feature allows you to call all of the participants that are on the conference, so the next time you need to set up this conference, you can press the Saved Conference Contact button, and it will call everyone all at once, rather than you having to dial each participant individually. Depending on the size of your conference, this could be a huge time saver for weekly conference calls. We'll look at the conference menu and our saved conference after this conference call is ended. I can become the moderator, which allows a single party to control the appearance and properties of the conference call for all participants. The moderator controls the content and format of the large windows and you can mute and unmute the call for specific participants. Anyone can request moderator control, but before another party can become the moderator, the current moderator must first relinquish moderator control. The moderator can also disconnect all participants at once. I can view a list of the participants Change the video window size. My choices are Auto, Force Landscape, or Presentation Mode. I can rename this conference, or I can view all saved conferences. I will let everyone know the conference is over and ask everyone to hang up. If someone doesn't hang up, 
I can disconnect them. Now I'll return to the conference menu and look at the conference I saved. If you have held multiple conferences, you will see them listed across the top, entitled with the date and time the conference was held. Touch and select a conference. A green border appears around the selected conference. On the left is a list of participants that were in the conference. This is a conference that I host weekly, so I'm going to rename this conference to Weekly Conference. I'll press the Done button when I'm finished. Now I'll add it to my favorites. I'll press the Add Saved Conference to Favorites button. So let's try it out. I'll return to my home page, and under Favorites, there's my weekly conference. Now I'll press the Weekly Conference Contact button, and select the top option, Dial Only, Available, Busy, and Unknown Contacts. And all of the participants are called simultaneously. You will hear ringing until they answer. In the event that one or more of the participants don't answer the call, you can press the Goodbye button to remove them from this conference, but they will still remain in your saved conference list. Now let's take a look at the Tools menu. First, I'll press the Apps menu button. Then I'll press the Tools button. The first tab we'll look at is User Identity. Here, you can change your password. Enter your current password, then enter the new password and confirm it. Then press the Change Password button. The next tab is Sounds. In this menu, you can change the Blue Star's ringtones and sounds. For example, I'll touch the drop-down menu and select a different ringtone for my incoming calls. And I can use the slide bar to see a full list of choices. The next tab is Utilities. Here, you can adjust the screen brightness, calibrate the touchscreen, clear stored pictures, check for updates, and reset to factory defaults. Before making any changes to this screen, check with your administrator. Now let's program the biometric fingerprint reader. First, we'll have to enter in our current username and password before we can start the process to add a new fingerprint. After I've entered in my username and password, I'll press the Next button. Slowly slide your finger over the fingerprint reader. You may need to scan your finger several times. The on-screen meter will display your progress. Once the meter reaches 100%, you will see the message, Registration Complete, and a green check mark. Press the Done button to return to the home page. To test the biometric fingerprint reader, we'll need to log off. To do this, Press the Apps Menu button, the Log Off button, and then select the top option, Log Off. I want to show you two things about the login screen. Whether your Blue Star is used by one person or multiple people, press the arrow in the Username box to see a list of users that have previously logged in. Here, you can select a user, but for security purposes, you will still need to enter the password. I'll press the Hide Keyboard button to return to the biometric fingerprint reader. Slowly slide your finger over the fingerprint reader. The screen will display a green box indicating a successful scan, and after a few seconds, your Blue Star will be logged in. Also, look for additional training on the Blue Star soft clients for iPhone, iPad, and PC.